must have been cool. Hello and welcome, welcome. I am Valerie of Tarot Unicorns and Coffee. And today this is a special event with Robin Poole. And the name of our event is Creating Your... Okay, it's a long title, y'all, and I didn't memorize the whole thing. Create Your Own Astrology Jewelry. And so before we get into it, I just want to real quickly go over the guidelines for all of the Tarot Unicorns and Coffee events. Very, very easy to remember. We only have two. The first one is love and light always. Hold yourself in love and light, and please hold everyone else in this gathering in love and light. And the second one is don't start no shit, won't be no shit. We can all be adult-ish today. And if you feel like you can't, go ahead and leave or I will kindly escort you and you can come back when you feel more aligned with what we're doing today. I had to find the right word, y'all. Okay. But I don't see, I don't suspect that we will have any problems with those who have joined us today. I just like to put that out there. You all know what's been going on in the technological world lately. Um, enough about that. So this event is part four, part four. Um, we've been doing this ongoing series in astrology. It's a deeper dive into your personal natal chart. Hopefully you all have pulled your natal charts in preparation for this event. If not, I'm going to drop a link real quickly so you can pull it up and it, it only takes a few moments so you can pull it up and follow along and not feel too distracted. Um, with that being said, this is part four. We did a deep dive into how to figure out if you have any challenging aspects in your natal chart what to do about them, how to identify them, how to support them. This is a continuation of that. As you look at your natal chart, how can you bring in, in this case, jewelry um, that will pull in and tune you into the specific energies that you might want to <clears throat> align with and pull into your life to support you on your journey. I hope I gave that a good introduction. I am going to now turn everything over to Robin Poole. This, um, is a special event. Robin Poole is the host, I would say. She's hosting this event. She's leading this event. I'm just in the background keeping track of chat. So I'm going to turn everything over to Robin now. Take it away, Robin. Yay. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, so do we want to do our little normal grounding to get into things, Valerie? Or would you like to jump right to the material today? Um, it's up to you. Okay, all right, let's do let's do a quick grounding. I think I could use that. I was telling Valerie I'm, I'm uh, heading out on a vacation later, which should be fun, but there's a lot of stress around it. So I think I could use a nice grounding. So I'm gonna ask you to join me in whatever's comfortable for you. Close your eyes or keep them open if you prefer and feel yourself settled in this space. This is a nice, comfortable space for us to learn some cool stuff that we can do with jewelry in this case, although it also flows over to your personal style, the clothing you choose to help support our astrology energies, our best personal energies. And I wanna create a bubble of protection around all of us and invite anybody to release whatever stress might be on them today or, or you're thinking about the rest of your today or your to-do list or other people in your environment. You can put that stress in a basket by your feet if you think you might need it later, or you can just let it go down into the earth, up into the, the, the stars, out into the surrounding area, wherever it is that you would like to let go and release that stress and difficulty for it to be muted into, into loving energy by our environment. And I'd like everybody to set an intention for what they want to learn today, where you want to uh, go, how you want to grow. There'll be some audience participation moments. So if you're brave, you can, you can stick things in the chat and there'll be plenty of time to ask questions. Take a moment. You can put your hand on your heart if you want and ask yourself, why did I want to come today? What am I hoping to get out of this? Is it greater knowledge? Is it more peace? Is it a cool new way to connect with myself? Do I just love jewelry? And so it had jewelry in the title and that's why I showed up, which might be partly why I just showed up. Whatever that reason is, let's invite our inner selves to fan that intention into flame. And I'm gonna set the intention that we can learn some great practical skills today, but also that we'll learn something that will help us support ourselves on our journey as we grow on this planet. I know I really need the support today and I'm really grateful for everybody who's here with us. 
And then my other intention is that we'll all share our positive energy while we're here. And then when we separate, we will all go our separate ways and only take with us what is for our own highest good, our own best energy, and that we can support each other while we're here, but we won't leave with carrying anything that doesn't belong to us and isn't for, for our, best, our best growth on our journey going forward. And I wanna thank any positive spirits that are here, any energies, any divine connection or ancestors that are here to support us and say thank you for helping to create a safe and beautiful world for us to be a part of. When you're ready, you can open your eyes back up and we'll get going. So I will mention that we are having a beautiful day in my rural location. So fingers crossed, the internet will be in good shape and we won't have any problems with it. But if I do pause, I can't see you guys once I start sharing my screen. So somebody will have to jump in and let me know that you lost me and then I'll just go back. It usually comes in back in in about 30 seconds. And you're welcome to put questions or comments in the chat or, or do audience participation, which Valerie will read to me since I also can't see the chat while I'm, while I'm teaching my class either. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will mention that I, I'm just a total jewelry nut. I come from a long line of jewelry loving women on both sides of my family. My grandmother in the 1920s, no 30s, took a trip by herself to Mexico where she brought back a whole bunch of gorgeous Mexican silver jewelry. And we have a picture of her from that era standing bareback on the back of a horse and traveling by herself in Mexico in the 30s was not something that every young woman was doing but apparently the lure of, of Mexican silver jewelry was like enough to, to draw her there. And my other grandmother um, lived in Manhattan across from the Metropolitan Museum of Art and used to troll the antique stores on the Upper East Side and send us amazing jewelry pieces. So today is about making jewelry, but there's also a lot of information that you can use to just pick out jewelry that is gonna support your energies, even if you're not gonna be making it. I will mention that the jewelry we're making today is very simple. I did some, some you know minimal tools, not a lot of skill required. I will also mention I'm wearing my Jupiter earrings today, which take a little more skill, but not a whole lot of skill. So at some point, if you guys get into jewelry, you can make all kinds of fabulous things. Okay, I'm going to get going. So I, I realized when I was lying in bed last night that that pair of earrings that I made when I was eight I actually wore it in my sophomore high school grad, my sophomore high school picture, school picture. And I wanted to get my mother to take a picture of that. And then I realized that she's already left for vacation and I couldn't, I couldn't get her to do it. But those things can last a long time. So um, this is called Astrology Jewelry Adorning Your Spirit. And it's because we're not really thinking about jewelry just from the perspective of what looks good or what goes with our outfit. It's really about bringing out your best inner energies. You might know what your best inner energies are, like how you love to feel, what lights you up inside. Or you might, um, you might be like, well, I'm not really sure what those are. And we're going to talk about some astrology ways to figure out what energies inside of you need support. Um, I got a chance to do a professional photo shoot at one point and ended up with this outfit. And I was totally stunned that this was the inner energy that wanted to come out for me. But there's a lot to be said for asking, what, what is that inner energy that I want to bring out? How do I want to feel with what I put on my body? I'll mention over here, um, I do uh, astrology style coaching. My website is www.spiritsaid. And also I put together an ebook for you guys that has a lot of specifics about different colors and stones you can use for different astrology planets and signs. And I'll be mentioning that as we go. And then at the end, I'll give you the URL where you can go and pick that up to fuel your jewelry making adventures. All right, so have you ever wondered, why am I drawn to this piece of jewelry? If you've ever had that experience where you're like, oh, I just love wearing my such and such, but you don't really know why. Or maybe you are thinking, well, it's, you know, it's nice to say, oh, I have a blue outfit, so I'm gonna wear my blue earrings. But could, could I do more than just making myself look good? Is there more power available to me? in terms of the accessories, the jewelry that I'm picking to put on my body. Or maybe you're coming to this from the perspective of, all right, well, I wear jewelry every day. So if I could, if I could do more than just put it on, like what if it could really help me change? What if it could help me grow? What if it could help me create the life that I wanted? And then this is something that is not very commonly thought of in Western society. 
using jewelry as medicine. But in my research for uh, this class and ancient astrology techniques, I discovered that actually jewelry was often prescribed as, as medicine by ancient doctors. And this is still a tradition in the um, uh, astrology from the Indian subcontinent, that there's an idea that actually working with the right stones for your, um, your uh, um, like energy for your condition can actually help alleviate physical discomfort and problems. And I have to tell you that this has absolutely been true for me once I learned to use jewelry as, as medicine for myself. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about that today. So I'm gonna ask you guys, if you wanna stick in the chat, if anybody has any specific questions that you really want answered, because it's always nice for me to know what it is that people are interested in. Is there anything about this class or about astrology that you really are hungering for? Val can read those to me and I will incorporate them in my explanation. If you don't have anything and you're just here for the ride, that's great. But if anything comes up to you, please feel free to stick that in. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of like putting on a piece of jewelry and then just feeling like this doesn't feel right. This isn't what I'm supposed to be wearing today. And then you take it off and you're like, oh, big relief. And if that's ever happened to you, then this, this class may explain why, because that's definitely happened to me. So here's my question. The single most important thing, and it, it sounds weird because it's not really about jewelry. So let's say some bad guys are chasing you, right? You're in a, you're in a movie, an action movie, and they're coming after you in a car chase. Which would you rather have? You driving a Ferrari or Mario Andretti, who's one of only two people ever to win a Formula One, an IndyCar race, a World Sports Car Championship, and a NASCAR race. Mario Andretti, this amazing race car driver driving a Honda Civic. So now maybe you are an amazing race car driver, and in which case you driving a Ferrari is like the best choice for sure. But I know for me, I was thinking back to the, the movie, the Jason Bourne movie, where, um, where he was, uh, there's this amazing chase scene through Paris and he's driving this like old beater of a car that's like 20 years old and it's barely holding together, but he drives it like up and down stairs and across the river and through the interchange, it's amazing. I think most of us would rather have an amazing driver with a mediocre car than a mediocre driver with an amazing car because I don't know what to do with a Ferrari. Like, I don't think I could get it, its best performance. And the main thing about making and wearing astrology jewelry is that it's really not like, oh, I'm going to put these stones on and then they will rescue me from my problem. Oh, if I just wear the right jewelry, my whole life will, will go together. Operator power is crucial. And so we're going to talk about this as we go through, but setting your intention for why are you putting these stones together? What are you trying to create? And how does this fit with your astrology energies is really important. So if you're localizing the source of power outside of you, in your jewelry, in your astrology chart, even in your divine connection, I, I love my divine connection, but they're not here to rescue me from living life. You can make that change and start to localize the power in you. And then you're using all of these things for support around you. Are there any questions or thoughts so far? Valerie, did anybody put anything in the chat for me to be answering as I go? Um, not exactly a question, but I do have a comment that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, someone started making gemstone bracelets. They're excited to use what they learned from the information you'll be teaching about today. Mm. Oh, perfect. Oh, I love that we have a gemstone bracelet maker today. That's great. I'm also a gemstone bracelet maker. And okay. Janetta, did you have a comment? You unmuted. Maybe not. Okay, go on. Okay, so here's our mindset change today. I like doing mindset changes so we can all grow from our, our classes that, that we go to. So the old vision of jewelry is that it's about your external appearance, right? Looking good for other people. I don't know if you, this happened to you. I used to be really into dressing up and I had this, this wardrobe of fantastic clothes I get at thrift stores and then COVID hit and I'm like, well, why should I change out of my pajamas? And I realized at that point that I was just only thinking about what I wore for like other people's benefit. And now that there was nobody to see me because of the lockdown, then why should I dress up anymore? And I was like, okay, that's not good. You know, or jewelry is about complementing your outfit or jewelry is about creating an image. That's kind of the old way that people thought about jewelry. It was to fit in, it was to look good. It's kind of a 1950s, you know, aesthetic where we all keep up with the Joneses by wearing the latest clothes and, and looking prosperous. 
And I'd like to invite you guys to the new vision, which is that jewelry helps me live out my truest self. Instead of looking good for others, jewelry is about making me feel great. Not in a like, I'm the only person who matters, but like my experience on this planet starts with me. And if I don't feel good, it's very difficult to really enjoy this experience or be there for others, right? So not others, but making me feel great. It's not just a compliment to my outfit, it's supercharging my power. Now this raises the question of what kind of power do you have? What kind of power do you want? Maybe you look at a place in your life and think, wow, I really need more power to set boundaries. I'm not so good at that. Or I need more power to enjoy my, my life in the physical world. Or I need more power to have confidence in myself even when other people disagree with me. What power would you like to supercharge? So give that some thought. And then it's not about creating an image like frosting on the cake, you know, which is gonna cover up the fact that I didn't get any sleep last night and I'm worried about my kids, but I'm gonna put on a bunch of makeup and jewelry and look good so nobody knows. It's really about enhancing your best energy. What is the energy you need to deal with not having gotten sleep and being worried about your kids? Maybe you need jewelry that's gonna help you just literally be physically more energetic if you're not sleeping well. Or maybe you need jewelry to help you sleep better. So rather than saying, well, I'm putting this together because of how it looks, and I don't mean that's bad, right? I, I, think, I think we can do both, but it's not just about how it looks. It's also about the energy that you feel that you need to thrive. So I'm feeling very stressed about this upcoming family vacation. So I put on clothes today and jewelry that would help me translate my sense of adventure and not worry that everything has to go perfect. This is my anti-perfectionist outfit, which we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. So take a moment and think to yourself, what kind of power would I like to supercharge? And obviously many of us can come up with lots of areas that we'd like to supercharge, but let's just pick one, just for the purposes of today's event, just pick one. And then once you uh, get the ebook with information on all the signs, you'll be able to choose other areas. Um, although I find that often it's best to just focus on at least one per day. So you can really pour your energy into that area. Okay. So, once you've done that, you wanna set your intention, what am I creating? Now, the basic way that astrology jewelry works is that we're picking colors and themes that go with a certain planet. Now, the ebook has a description of the themes of each planet and sign and the colors and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna go through every planet and sign today. But like, let's say, for example, that you have Venus in Aries. Venus is a planet that's all about relationship, loves, uh, arm, uh, harmony, beauty, creativity. And Aries is a sign that's about individualism and doing things your own way. But this isn't necessarily the most compatible energies. And if you look at your natal chart and you have Venus in Aries, you may be somebody who really struggles to build relationships that feel harmonious because you're like, well, I don't wanna give up who I am as an individual in order to please somebody else. Or you might find that you are fine with people as long as you get along with them. But once you start thinking about or talking about what you believe, then you get angry and your relationships start to disintegrate. And that's because in your chart, reconciling the energy of Venus with the energy of Aries is not the easiest thing to do. So you might set an intention. I want to learn to love people. That's the Venus part, but I want to do it my own way in Aries. So my intention is that I'm going to learn how to love other people and have great relationships with them without giving up that part of myself. And to do that, you could wear a necklace like this one. So this isn't actually a necklace that I made. I thought I'd illustrate some jewelry that isn't the jewelry we make just for purposes of, um, of uh, using what's in our, already in our jewelry box. This is probably a 1950s, it's from Venice um, and it's blown glass, but you can see the Venus portion because we've got these pink roses. Pink is associated with Venus, roses are also for Venus. And it's got this sort of very elegant gilt decoration. And then obviously the red is associated with Mars. So this is a necklace that combines Venus energy with the pink roses and the feminine um, filigree with the Mars energy of this strong red. And then when you wear it, you think, what does it mean for me to love my own way? And you meditate on that question. Or you think about your relationship that you're targeting for improvement and think, how can I be myself without giving up my relationship with this person? 
Here's another example. So this is a pair of earrings I actually made. Mars is a planet that's all about taking action. It's the, the, the god of war. It's about setting boundaries. It's about physical vitality. And Scorpio is a sign about deep shadow work, digging up the subconscious, getting honest about what's really going on and finding the appeal. This is um, Scorpio here because we've got these black stones. This is a snowflake obsidian. And then we have the red crystals. And then I picked a couple charms that are very Marsy, fearless warriors, a, a Mars type thing to think. So this would be a great pair of earrings to work with boundary setting for shadow work. Like maybe you have problems healing because you let other people walk over you too much. And so you're like, I'm gonna harness my Mars and Scorpio to be able to set my own healthy boundaries so that I can do this shadow work. All right, I got one more example and then I'm gonna stop for questions about this. This is a button I painted. So we don't have to just be making jewelry out of wires and stones and things. You can also use vintage buttons. I like vintage ones because they're often big. This button's a couple inches across. Um, so this is Neptune, which is this light purple color, is a color for Neptune. And then Leo is the orange. So I've got two colors here, no stones, just two colors. And these are a bunch of runes that have a specific meaning. But Neptune and Leo, Neptune is a planet that's all about spirituality, cosmic connection, your intuition, being a star seed, like that sort of thing, sort of mysticism. And Leo's a sign that's about um, playful creativity. So let's say you have an issue where you um, kind of take spirituality too seriously. Uh oh, what if I mess it up? Oh no, what if I, what if I get it wrong and then and then my divine connection is dissatisfied? Okay, well now it's time to meditate. I really got to be serious about this. And you might say to yourself, you know what? I'm not really enjoying my spirituality. I need to lighten this up then Neptune and Leo could be a great combination. And you could sew this onto a hat or a scarf. The one thing about painted buttons is that I do not recommend putting them through the laundry. So I like to sew them on things like hats or I'll sew them onto a pin and then pin them on a jacket. And that way, if I have to wash the jacket, I'll just un unpin it. The other thing about um, painted buttons is it's always a good idea to go over them with a clear coat of varnish. And if anybody has any crafting questions about how I did this stuff, you're obviously welcome to ask. The answer is a teeny tiny paintbrush. Is really the bottom line. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions about this basic concept of how we're combining the planet with the sign to target an area where we need growth? And we have a small group, so you guys can just unmute and ask your question. Wait, there we go. I just enjoy. We're uh, commenting and enjoying it, and. Uh, getting more ideas. So we're, we're calming down. Okay. Our, our, our pens are very active over here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wonderful. That's really great. Okay, good. All right. Anybody else have any questions they want to ask? Thank you for jumping in and telling me that you are enjoying this. I'm trying to calm down myself. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so um, there are two ways to, to figure out what planet you wanna work with. And there, there are other ways to think about this, but we're gonna start with the simple thing of just choosing a planet. There is the astrology analysis. And I didn't go into detail on that in this class because you can go back and watch the replay of part one, which gives a much deeper analysis of this and explanation with an example on Valerie's YouTube channel, which is called Goddess with an Attitude. And, Hopefully we can find the link and we'll stick the link to that in chat. The quick analysis though, is that if you have any planets in the second, sixth, eighth or 12th house, or you have planets that are in detriment or fall, that's like Venus and Aries, that's a planet in a sign where its energies don't express very well, or you have a planet that is 90 degrees or 180 degrees or next to Mars or Saturn, those are all good planets to work with. And I'll give you an example in just a, a moment and you can see how those, what, what that looks like in a chart. Um, so, and then the other thing is that that ebook that I said I made for you guys has a list of each planet and then the sign that's detriment or fall. So once you get the ebook, you'll be able to see that. Although you can also Google planets in detriment or fall and there are plenty of lists on the internet. So from an astrology standpoint, in the second, sixth, eighth or 12th house, a planet in detriment or fall, and a planet that is 
90 degrees, 180 degrees, or next to Mars or Saturn. However, you can also just ask, what do I want help with? I want help with boundary setting. I want help with balanced relationships. I want help with more physical energy. And then you can just pick a planet that fits with that. So if you want help shining with more energy, if you wanna be comfortable with yourself, if you wanna harness your charisma, try the sun. If you want help building a life that you long for, something that you wanna manifest, dealing with your emotions, nurturing yourself, working with your family, try the moon. If it's mental or communication-based, how your mind works, you wanna clarify your thoughts, you need help working on your taxes, try Mercury. If it's about relationships or creativity, love, enjoying yourself, having fun, try Venus. And by the way, all these colors in the background, the sun goes with yellow, the moon goes with gray or silver, Mercury is multicolored, Venus goes with pink. So this is your first introduction here to what color goes with which planet. Uh, if you want help fighting for something, like you're like, I gotta set better boundaries or I need to fight for my own beliefs, or you just have a lot of hard work ahead and you want some physical strength, you can try Mars. If you need help learning, expanding, taking up space or finding abundance, try Jupiter. Jupiter is also especially good for higher education. So if somebody needs help with college, Jupiter is a great thing to choose from. If you need help letting go, releasing things, dealing with grief, or bringing back what was discarded, try Saturn. If you want help dealing with change, surviving surprises, maybe you're gonna be moving and you're nervous about all the different things that's gonna bring, you can try Uranus. If you want um, help with your spirituality, with mysticism, inspiration, dealing with the unknown, Neptune is great. And then Pluto is about deep and powerful transformation, healing from shadow work. And honestly, I like Pluto if you're like, I just gotta step up in life. I just gotta step up. And one thing that's kind of cool is if you actually sell jewelry and you're making gemstone bracelets for sale or, or to give to people, you can now make a bracelet that has specific planets or colors in them and sell it with a tag that says, this Pluto bracelet will help you harness your power and deal with shadow work. This Neptune bracelet will help connect you with your spirit guides and your intuition, et cetera, et cetera. And that way people can choose from whatever it is that you're selling in order to create change in their own life as well. This slide is in the ebook. So I'm not going to read everything here, but just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, choose from the menu if you don't want to do the allergy analysis or you're just like getting up in the morning and you don't want to look at your natal chart and you're like i just need something that will make me feel happier try the sun <laughs> i just need something to get my brain together try mercury okay does anybody have any questions about what planet stands for what or if you have a specific life issue and you're not certain which planet is the right one i'd be happy to hear what that is, is and then help you help you steer in the right direction for the planet I have a question. Uh -huh. um, in your examples, you it seemed like you were working with maybe one or two different planets. Here, as we look at the list, what would you suggest as far as maybe the first couple of pieces that we create? Should we work with just one planet or should we maybe pick one or two? What, what would you suggest? And would to add on question, uh -huh. do are there any planets that don't, that we shouldn't put, like don't put these two on a bracelet? Or is there anything like that? Right, it's a really good question. So I would suggest that to begin with, you start with one. Start with one planet and one sign. Because I think that that will help your, your inner intuition become better attuned. Because what you're going to do is start wearing the piece of jewelry and then write down how things changed for you. What did you feel? How did it work? What did you, what did you experience? So it's like, you know, you don't want to start, like if you were just learning to cook, right? You wouldn't start with a recipe with a zillion complex ingredients. Start with something simple, with just one planet and one sign. And then you can always work up from there. That's the nice thing about this stuff is it's really easy to make more. It's not very expensive. And you can always take apart your bracelet and add some more stuff later if you want. So I would just start with one. Um, in general, Mars and Saturn are good to work with, but they often kind of bring you the right lesson the hard way. So if you make a Saturn bracelet and you're wearing that, 
don't expect to have like the happiest day at work. Expect to have a day where you're like, okay, deep grief is coming up and I am releasing this, but it may not be like the most pleasant experience. So for example, Venus, which is about love and joy and fun. If you do a, a, a bracelet that has Venus and also has Saturn, you have two energies that are, are kind of gonna give you an interesting sort of synergy there. So I would say that if you're not really sure and you're like, I don't know about this, I, I haven't done this, or you just have the kind of personality where you don't just jump into the deep end, it's easiest to start with Jupiter, Venus, the sun, or the moon. Those are the ones that typically bring the most kind of comfortable energy as you get the hang of it. And then if you wanna add other stuff in, you can. The one thing to say though, is that, you know, it's, it's basically a pretty safe thing to do. So the worst thing that's likely to happen to you is you're like, oh, this, this feels icky. This bracelet that I created doesn't really fit with my energies very well. Okay, maybe I won't wear it. Okay, maybe I'll take it apart and make a new one, but you're not gonna like destroy your life by bringing the wrong energies together somehow. Yeah, but when in doubt, start with Jupiter, Venus, the sun, and the moon. Those are the easy ones to begin with. Um, I would like to um, ask, um, you're going to give us the colors, right? That well, besides so the, color, the colors examples. And the colors, okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples. And in the examples, they'll, they're a bunch of colors. We're actually gonna do a little quiz. I used to be a tutor, so I have to give you a quiz. <laughs> Has and the other me. thing is, if you're talking to a Melissa and I, which is Pat, we're uh -huh. both really well-seasoned astrologers. Oh, great. And, uh, yeah, we've been doing it for many, many years. So we've, we, we are very pleased to get what you're talking about. Okay. That's awesome. And that's, I'm so glad to hear that. So Basically what I did for the class is I, I gave you some colors, like here's a basic list of colors, um, but there are definitely more colors and there are more stones and that's on the ebook. So at the end, I will give you the um, link to the ebook and it has colors for all the signs, colors for all the planets, themes for all the houses. And I just decided not to gum up the class by giving everybody all the information in the class on the theory that nobody could absorb colors for 12 signs, 10 planets, <laughs> and 12 and twelve houses. But there is a way to get the colors on the ebook, and you're going to see a lot of the colors as we go through the class itself. Um, I have to tell you, I'm really excited that seasoned astrologers are here with this, because this is, a, this is something that the ancients did with astrology. Like if you went to a doctor in Egypt 2,000 years ago, you would absolutely get jewelry as part of the prescription about what to do. Um, what you should jewelry to wear. And so I'm really excited that we're bringing this back now into modern astrology. Okay. A question for you, Robin. Yeah. Um, first of all, Melissa and Pat, that's awesome. Did I know that? How did I not know that? I didn't know that about you guys. I love it. Um, question for you about, of course, it's going to be about the moon jewelry. Of mm -hmm. course. Right. Um, the moon jewelry, when it says emotions, mm -hmm. if I was to create something based on the moon, it would it help me balance my emotions or would it pull my emotions to the surface, making me more emotional, kind of like the moon does? So I think it depends on the intention you set for it. Cool. So for example, let's say, yeah, let's say you use um, a lot of very like soothing colors and you create a symmetrical arrangement and you say, okay, this is for emotional balance. Then I think, that, that it, you could absolutely help soothe out your emotions because you created a style and a design that was full of harmony and, and soothing, right? But let's say you're like, you know what? I can soothe myself all day long, but I'm not actually making any progress by just soothing. You can soothe yourself with Netflix, right? You're like, okay, it's time for these emotions to come up. Then you wanna ask your intuition, you know, do I need to create a design that's off balance? Do I need to create a design that pulls in a little bit of Scorpio energy for more depth? Do I need to look at the moon in my astrology chart and see what sign it's in and create one for my actual moon, not just a generically soothing moon bracelet, but figure out what my moon is going to do? Because your moon may say, Val, I know you want to be soothed, but honestly, what you need is a good dose of honesty here. And if you harness the moon from your astrology chart and you ask for your divine connection, okay, as much as I want to be soothed, is that really what I need? then you can create a whole nother bracelet for that. 
we all know that there are those times that we just want to be soothed. We've got a big day ahead of us. We're babysitting the grandkids. There's family drama. You're like, I just need to calm myself down. But you could create multiple moon bracelets and you could create one for soothing, like kind of like emergency, you know, emergency CPR soothing. And then you could create another one for like, all right, let me harness what the moon really has to teach me today, which might be soothing, or it might be that, all right, this emotion is ready to come up. Does that answer your question there? Thank you, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of astrology jewelry is you now have the ability to, to create a piece and set your intention and then really help yourself change in a very like physical way. I think it's really awesome. We're going to talk briefly at the end of this, by the way, about rituals. So that's another thing you could do is you could do a, a bracelet for soothing, and then you could combine that and supercharge it with a soothing ritual to really double down on that soothing energy, for example. Okay. Anybody else want to ask anything before we move on to actually making bracelets and, and pendants? And I've been saying bracelet, by the way, but you could do bracelet. I've, I've got a couple of pendants and necklaces and earrings and all kinds of other stuff. All right, I'm going to move on here. Okay, so here are the steps. So for my, uh, my um, part one, I ended up using Ronald Reagan as an example because he's got somebody, he's somebody who has a lot of problems with his planets. Um, and so I decided I would just resurrect him for this example here. So let's say that Ronald Reagan in some alternate universe came to me and said, I really need some astrology jewelry to help me with these, these inner fears that I'm having. Reagan was known for his inner fears about, about the communists and about the CIA and about the Hollywood, his whole life he suffered from what, what might be called paranoia. Um, the people were out to get him. And those of you who are experienced astrologers will see his chart and know why. So Reagan has his Jupiter here in Scorpio. Scorpio is a sign of deep wounding of deep healing. And he's got his Jupiter in the 12th house. You might recall I said that was one of those houses where your planets can cause problems. The 12th house is the house of inner fears. And his Jupiter is opposed more or less about 180 degrees from Saturn, which is this H over here. So if we did, if Reagan came to me and said, I need help with inner fears as an astrologer, I would instantly zero in on this Jupiter as a source of problems. Um, his Jupiter is not in um, detriment or fall here, but his sun in Aquarius is, and it's 90 degrees from the Jupiter, and 90 degrees in astrology is um, an angle that usually can cause some problems. So I would immediately target Reagan's Jupiter as, as a planet that whose energy needed support in his life, because it should be a source of abundance for him, but instead it's it's partly causing all of these inner Fears. And the interesting thing about Reagan's fears is that they all circled around areas in which he was abundantly successful. So he was a very successful actor in Hollywood, yet he was very afraid that um, there were people who were out to destroy his Hollywood career. Then he became a spokesperson in commercials where he was also very successful, but he was afraid that the CIA told people to stop hiring him. And then he became president, which is kind of, you know, the apex of success, except then he was afraid that the Soviets were going to undermine world order and ended up in all these wars all over the, the country. So everywhere he had this success, he also, he also was afraid. So what I would do is step one is choose the planet. We got Jupiter. Now you can just work with the planet. And so anybody here who's not an experienced astrologer or wants to start simple, or if you feel a little overwhelmed by the astrology part, just start with the planet and that, that's a good place to begin. However, if I were doing this for Reagan, I would then find its sign in the natal chart Reagan's got Scorpio. I would choose some stones for Jupiter. So I might choose um, amethyst or maybe um, some blue stones like a sapphire or blue topaz. Then the next step is to choose some colors. Now, if you just have your planet, you can choose colors from the planet. But if I were doing Scorpio here, I know that Scorpio is associated with um, And then I would lay out and assemble. We lost um, your audio. Okay. When did you lose it? Did you, did you hear me go through all the steps? No. Can you tell me where you lost me? There we go. Um, oh. Did I get through the explanation of why Jupiter was an important planet for Reagan? Yes. yes. 
You got that part, okay. So now that we've narrowed in on Jupiter, we would choose some Jupiter planet, sorry, choose our Jupiter planet. If you want to, you can find the sign. It's not necessary to use the sign, but if you like astrology and you wanna do that, I get some extra boost I find when I, when I add the signs in. So I would choose Scorpio because that's where his Jupiter is. Then I would choose some Jupiter stones. I might use amethyst or maybe um, like a topaz, some, a blue stone. Then I would choose some colors for the planet or the sign. So Jupiter is associated with blue and orange, but since I'm using the sign, I would go with Scorpio, which is associated with black and then like blood red, dark reds. And then the next step is to lay out and assemble your piece. So you start with the planet. If you want to, you find its sign. Then you get stones that go with the planet. Then you pick colors that go with the planet or the sign. And then we're gonna do our assembly. Now, I will mention that people ask me, well, where, where can I get these stones, right? So obviously my ebook has a list of stones, but you can also just type into Google stones associated with Jupiter or Jupiter crystals, and there's long lists of them. I personally favor going to the thrift store because I think it's eco-friendly and it's also less expensive than just going down to Michael's. But also I think it's great to um, go to, for the stones, to go to your local bead shop. First of all, I think it's nice to support local businesses but also they're much more likely to have like amethyst beads, you know? And, and the other thing too, is if you go to like a Michael's or a Hobby Lobby, you sometimes have to buy like 10 or 20 of the same bead. And the local bead store will allow you to just buy individual ones. You can bring your own bag. That way you're not creating extra waste and you're supplying local businesses. And if you don't know if they have it, you just call them up ahead of time and say, do you have Labradorite beads? Do you have amethyst beads? I find that's usually less expensive and, and easier. Plus, I love going into bead stores because there's all kinds of beads and, and then you can pick things out and, and work with the colors that work for you. All right. Does anybody have any questions about these steps before we get into some examples? I'm not seeing any questions. Great. So we're going to go through a few here and you'll see how they work, I think. And then we're going to actually get into the how-to portion of of things. Okay, so this is a bracelet that I made and this is for somebody who has Saturn in Gemini. So the Saturn part here, Saturn's associated with black stones. So this is a uh, banded agate is the stuff at the bottom. And then we've got some snowflake obsidian. And honestly, I didn't really think of Saturn and snowflake obsidian, but I had a dream. <laughs> And in the dream, I heard a voice that told me I needed to be using Snowflake Obsidian. So that's what I was doing with that. So it's not just going to Google and going to a list, right? You might also want to access your own intuition or your own dreams about what, what um, stones uh, create this for you. Okay, so Saturn and Gemini. Saturn's about letting go and Gemini's about information and communication. So I actually made this for a client who was having a Saturn transit and she wanted to let go of some old ways that she had been raised and, and be able to let go of this old information so she could kind of create her own beliefs. So we've got the Saturn stones, snowflake obsidian, and this banded agate. These all came from the local bead store for me. And then I added the colors of Gemini. So Gemini is yellow and orange. And you can see I've got some uh, yellow Swarovski crystals here. I've got some yellow glass beads. This is um, uh, amber here, these uh, orange ones. And then I added in a little bit of red coral because this person also had an issue with her sat with her Mars. So we just incorporated just a touch of Mars energy for her because in her chart, her Saturn and her Mars actually kind of coincide with each other. And then I added some Gemini style. Gemini is very de detailed, um, playful. And so that's why there's so many different shapes here. And I added in the amber, even though amber is technically more associated with the sun and Leo, but I'm like, hey, why not be playful? It's the right color, right? Gemini doesn't take things too seriously. So I'm using the basic Saturn stones. I'm incorporating the Gemini colors, the yellow and orange. And then I'm kind of letting my creativity and personal style fly as far as how to put them together. And there are a few basic jewelry making principles, design principles that I use, which you don't have to use, but I'll point them out in case you like them. 
One is that I really like a mix of matte stones with crystal and, and things that are bright and, and really catch the light. So I use a mixture of natural stones, but also glass and also crystal and also beads and sometimes I'll put in plastic and things like that. Just because I think a variety of textures is good. You can see I'm going with different shapes. I've got these um, sort of like hexagonal, they're not hexagonal, but they're like bicone, that's what they're called, bicone crystals. Next to the rough shape of the coral, next to the spherical shape of these beads. So going from a, a small bead to a large bead back to a small bead sort of adds extra texture to your design. And then the other thing is that I personally cannot wear a bracelet that's entirely made of stone because the energy is just too strong for me. So when I make bracelets, I always use some real stones, but a lot of things that don't have such strong energy, which is why I use glass and crystal, which is not actually crystal, it's just glass with a high lead content. And, uh, and then even plastic beads, because I just find that an entire bracelet of stones is too much energy for me. So if you're making bracelets for yourself or you're making them for other people, you might ask how sensitive they are to energy and let that kind of guide you in terms of whether you want to do all natural crystals, all natural stones, or whether you want to intersperse some sort of lower or more neutral energy uh, materials. And by the way, I'm going to show you how to make this bracelet at the end, this a bracelet in this style at the end of the, the presentation. Okay, any questions about this guy? Not seeing any questions. Remember, you can just unmute if you would like when she asks for questions. So let's say that uh, bracelets are not your style. You don't want to wear a bracelet. You don't like bracelets. They bug some people on their wrists. So this is another uh, pendant, but it's actually the very same thing. It's also Saturn and Gemini. So I wanted to put up two of the same uh, planet and sign here because I wanted to just show that there's not just one way to harness the energies in your jewelry. So you can recognize similar colors here. We've got these Gemini colors of yellow and orange. Um, but in this case, I used a charm instead of a stone for Saturn. So Saturn's associated with time. And I just, I have a huge, from many years of jewelry making, I have a huge store of charms and old vintage necklaces and all kinds of stuff. Oh, that's another thing you can do, by the way, which is great at thrift stores is buying thrift jewelry and then taking it apart for the beads. It's a great, a great way to recycle jewelry. Anyway, so I just went into my, um, my stash and found a clock charm. And then I added these uh, Gemini colors. And I'm going to show you how to make a pendant like this also at the end of the, in the how-to portion. So you really can, can just let your creativity go. Use your intuition. Use what's already in the house. Put stuff together. And you can see that here I've got my similar principles of small and large and then going back to small. And then a nice mix of natural materials and crystals as well. Just to show you how we would move this. So here's a little quiz. What planet and sign do you think this bracelet could be for? You might notice it's got the same stones as the one that I showed you first. So what planet is that? You can put that in the chat or unmute if you remember yeah. what planet. Red is Mars, right? Yes, red is Mars, exactly. Right, so this is, this was a, another transit bracelet I did for somebody who's having a Mars transit. Does anybody the, remember what these black stones go for? What planet is this? Well, both Saturn and Pluto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Saturn and Pluto. And then you can see that I put blue here. Anybody want to take a crack at a guess? What kind of sign, astrology sign, might go with blue? Mercury. Yes, Mercury can be blue. Mercury is mostly associated with multiple colors. So if I were going to do Mercury, I would do like a like a blue, like a speckled blue combination. Can anybody think of an astrology water sign? Oh, I was yeah. going to say Aquarius. Pisces? Pisces. Pisces. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Aquarius is an air sign. It's so odd because but, it's called water bearer, but it's actually an air sign. I also think that blue can apply to Libra, because if mm -hmm. you look at any uh, list in the world. Blue is the color that is everybody's favorite sign. And if you look at the world, everybody's talking about falling in love. So I think that blue is associated with Libra in some ways. Yeah. 
I also think is the other is the other stone in there uh is that uh malachite no not oh, malachite. graphite uh the graphite is that the silver one magnetite um it totally could be except it turns hematite. out yeah oh, hematite. Hematite. Oh, okay and hematite I know is usually Black is usually diamond. well but hematite is usually uh associated with mercury though isn't it um it, so okay so I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, this could totally be hematite, except I will tell you that in this case, it's plastic. <laughs> I, I just found, I found a fake pearl. They're plastic pearls from a thrift store necklace. <laughs> but yes, it could be that. If, if I had actual hematite, that would be great. So what we're coming up with here is the difference between a formal association and what is associated with a, um, uh, a certain planetary energy for you, right? So blue is not in the like official lists of Libra colors. Usually Libra is not associated with blue. But if you think for your benefit, you're like, no, I think blue is very Libra to me. And you had a great rationale because people think a lot about love and Libra is about relationships and everybody loves the color blue, which is true. It's the most commonly, it's the most common favorite color. It's also my favorite color. And on, on favorite color lists, blue is always the most popular. So you can always guess that somebody's favorite color is blue and have the best chance of being right. So if in your mind, you associate blue with Libra because everybody loves blue and everybody loves love and Libra is about love, that's what really matters. If you're trying to harness your Libra energy because you want better relationships or you want more balance and harmony in life, then you can decide that you're gonna use blue for Libra because that's what brings out your best energies. So when we go back to the beginning of what I said about setting your own intention and how operator power is really what's important, then you can, you can pick any color as long as it brings out that energy for you. I'll tell you what I had in mind for this, which was Saturn and Mars and Cancer. Cancer is another water sign. It's associated with the moon. And so the blue here was for somebody, people who have uh, Mars and Cancer, often are like, um, they have trouble setting boundaries for themselves. They're very good at nurturing other people because cancer is a sign about nurturing, but they tend to fight for other people more than they fight for themselves. So this Saturn and Mars and cancer is about finding new vigor. Vigor is a Mars, uh, Mars uh, keyword to heal, which is cancer. So working on healing yourself. And that's where I, I picked these blue and the blue and gray cancer. I. I feel like cancer is a very soothing sign. And so I came up with something that was low contrast because the blue and the gray are not super high contrast. And then cancer to me is very sort of graceful and, and elegant because it's associated with the moon. And so that's why I picked sort of a simple design, not like playful and full of all kinds of jagged edges and different shapes the way I had for the Leo one. Yeah, thank you guys for playing along with me. You can see that what really matters is what what says the energy for you when you look at something? And it's really important to take what I give you as a guideline, but it's more like what I give you is like a diving board. And then you get to launch off of that and create your own dive, whatever that means for you. All right. Anybody have any questions or comments here? I'm not seeing any questions. However, I am seeing a comment. We have someone who has a, con uh, a cancer son, so they really enjoy the highly relevant. It's what they said. They really enjoyed you oh, talking about the cancer energy. Yeah. Yeah. Cancer and another cancer. comment about um, they haven't gotten adventurous with different shapes of beads, but they would like to expand beyond the round beads eventually. Mm -hmm. So they're enjoying the different styles Good. you're presenting. Good. Yeah, I'm a big fan of different shapes. I think that that, that makes it more textural and interesting. But again, it all depends on, on what elicits the right energy for you. Thank you guys for your comments. That really means a lot to me. Okay, so we're gonna have a little quiz time. So here I've got some standard colors because I wanted to illustrate, this is, this is my jewelry making board. I was just making a whole bunch of earrings at one point. Um, I wanted to illustrate that it's okay if you don't even have the stones. You don't have to go buy any stones or if you can't find the stones you need, you can just do it with the colors and setting your intention. So blue is often associated with Jupiter and with the moon and also the sign of cancer. Um, also Pisces can be blue. Red for Mars and Aries. Orange, Jupiter, and also with Gemini and Leo. Pink for Venus. 
and black for Saturn and Scorpio. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. Blue can go with other things too, but I just wanted to keep it simple for the purpose of our uh, discussion. So let's start with this bead, this earring right here. So we see we've got some orange, we've got some pink, and this bottom thing is a really cool bead, which is actually purple, except then when it catches the light, it's an iridescent orange. So what planet or sign could combination could this be for? This is to get your planet sign juices flowing. Feel free to put it in the chat or just unmute if the group is still small. Jupiter and Venus. Yes, absolutely. So what if we were gonna combine Jupiter with a sign? Oh, I'm sorry, because I didn't give you a pink, pink for a sign. What if we were gonna combine Venus with a sign? This could be the planet Venus in the sign of what? What sign goes with orange? Gemini. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So if you had Venus in Gemini, or what's the other one for orange I have here? Leo. Yeah, so if you had Venus in Gemini or Venus in Leo, this would be a great pair of earrings to make for yourself or wear something like that. Perfect. Okay, yes, how about this? Mars and Venus are conjunct, so. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> right, so you could, uh, you could make those earrings and then you could add a little um, bow and arrow charm on the bottom of them to get the Mars, the Mars warlike in. Okay, how about this yes. blue one? What, what, what sign and planet combination could this blue one be for? Cancer and moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have a moon in cancer. Now, the moon rules cancer. So some people might be thinking, well, if the moon rules cancer, why would I want a cancer moon charm? But maybe your moon ruling cancer is in a house that's not so happy, like it's in the second house. And so you tend to get very worried about material possessions or it's in the sixth house. And so you feel like you're a slave to work. Or maybe you've got the moon in cancer, which is amazing, but it's 90 degrees from Mars. And so you tend to find these obstacles to nurturing yourself. So even the moon in cancer, which is a ruling planet, even those ruling planets still sometimes need some astrological help from jewelry and supportive things. Yeah, okay, so what other options could there be for? In the chat, we have Jupiter and Scorpio. Yeah. And someone said moon in second, or oh, I guess that was just a comment about moon pain in second. Yeah, moon in second, right? Then you might have materialism issues. I have, I have some problems with that. Yeah, this could also be Saturn and Cancer, the black for Saturn and then the blue for Cancer. Great. Okay, we got one more. And then we're going to get Neptune a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. These beads, Neptune has kind of a dreamy sort of quality, and these beads are not solid blue. You can see like the one Yeah, here. that's what I noticed. Yeah, the one up here is a solid matte blue bead, but this top bead has kind of a sort of pearlescent shimmer, and it's got multiple colors of blue. And so if that brings out those Neptune or even the Pisces sort of flowy, dreamy energies for you, you can see we're really diving into how the jewelry makes us feel. And I, I feel very gratified that you guys are picking up on that kind of stuff <laughs> because that's when it really gets powerful is when the energy of the jewelry starts to really speak to you. Okay, I got one more. How about this guy? What moon, I mean, what planet and uh, sign combination could this be? Green. Okay. I kind of think like the Emperor cards to Mars. And... Mm -hmm. The red is Marsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this bead is kind of a green, Capricorn. but it's more of a, like a blue green. Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you had Mars and Aquarius, you could definitely do this. Yeah. Anybody really have any other ideas for a planet sign combination for this guy? Well, the the uh, red can also be things like Aries and the dynamism of uh, Aries. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the transparency of the bead. That really sort of lends it to more water mm -hmm. or even more air because air has to be um, seen as blue sometimes. Right. Because otherwise, what color is air? <laughs> Right. We also have yeah. Jupiter and Aries in the chat. 
Yes, that would be a classic combination for sure. Or you could do something like if you had Mars and Pisces, right? You could do the red from Mars. And then you could say a oh, Pisces is a water sign. And this bead seems watery to me because it's transparent. So if you have Mars and Pisces, yeah. So you can see that there's no like right or wrong answer here. There are multiple options as far as how this comes together for you. But I just thought we'd go through a few to kind of get our, our juices flowing. Perfect. And thank you guys for your participation, which I really appreciate. Okay, so I think my next slide. Yeah, okay, so I think my next slide, well, now we're gonna get to the how-to portion where I'm actually gonna demo some of this jewelry making. Does anybody have any questions they wanna ask about signs and colors and energies before I get to some actual demonstrations? Okay. All right, so here's the steps again, just to go through them one more time. Choose your planet if you want to, find the sign in your natal chart or the natal chart of the person you're making it for. Like these are great for graduation presents, you know, and you can get the, the natal chart of the person who's graduating and then make something really personalized for them. So choose your planet, find the sign in the natal chart, get your stones together, figure out your colors, lay out and assemble your piece. And this slide is also in the ebook. So once you get it, you'll be able to see this again. All right, so we're gonna start in bracelet land. So I'm going to just talk quickly about how the bracelet goes together. And then I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I actually I actually have all these things made here and I didn't quite finish them. So I thought I would, I would demo online how to actually work with this material. So the first thing you need for the bracelet is something called memory wire. Now, if you're an advanced jewelry maker and you know how to make bracelets, you can string bracelets, you can weave bracelets, you can crochet bracelets, you can do all kinds of things. But in my experience, this is the very simplest way to make an easy and, and very wearable bracelet. So I'm demoing the memory wire approach. So memory wire is what you need. If you don't have any, you can go to the craft store, the thrift store, or get onto Amazon and just type in memory wire. There are a lot of um, uh, there are a lot of uh, different makers, so I didn't want to get into like branding problems by mentioning one of them. And I will also mention that there's a large size and a small size, and so you can figure out whether you want to do the large or small by the size of the wrist that you're working on. So I have a small wrist, I use the small size, but the large size is also good. And memory wire, by the way, also comes in ring sizes that are small enough to go around your finger, so you can make jewelry rings the same way. Okay, so the first thing you do is snip off a piece of the memory wire. And I will just let you know, memory wire is super hard because it really, it keeps this shape. That's why you can string beads on and put it around your wrist and it stays in a circle. Do not use your, your like high quality jewelry making wire cutters on this. Like you need a serious pair of like, I found this in my, my dad's workshop or my mom's workshop, like hardware wire cutters to cut your memory wire because it's so hard. And then the first thing you do is you can see you make a loop at the one of the ends. And I just use a pair of needle nose pliers to turn the loop over. Then you wanna lay out your beads. I always lay them out on a towel or a napkin so they don't roll away, but you can lay them out on a bead board. So I was doing Mars and Cancer for this one. And you can see for Cancer, I've got the red coral. Should move that up, there we go. So Cancer, I've got this red coral. And then I have some red carnelian here at the end. And then I have a bunch of blue beads for the cancer. And in this case, I chose a bunch of blues that were kind of similar, but different because I wanted it to have that watery feel. So I didn't go for just a light blue and just a dark blue because I didn't want something that was high contrast. And I've got a couple of these beads here that have that shimmery sort of gradated look, graduated look. But again, I have a combination of um, uh, glass and plastic, some faceted, some round. These ones are from a bracelet that somebody gave, gave me. By the way, if you get into this jewelry making stuff, you just let your friends know that if they have any old broken jewelry they don't want anymore, that you'd be happy to take it off their hands. And you will get showered with people who are like, oh, I bought this bracelet on vacation, but I never wear it. So a lot of this stuff comes from just stuff that people have given to me and, I, and I've taken apart over the years. I also have a couple of um, uh, turquoise beads here, just they're not very big, but I wanted to add them in because I wanted to add a Jupiter component to this bracelet, but you can see it's really mostly Marsy. Um, and then I strung it all together on my memory wire here. And what I do for this overlapping portion, if you can see at the bottom here, 
is I mainly use the big beads for the top. And then in the overlap, I use these smaller beads and that reduces bulk at the bottom of the bracelet where the two, the two parts of the memory wire are overlapping. So my intention for this, this Mars and Cancer, is to nurture boundaries. Like if this bracelet were for me, that's what I would be using it for. But this person who, who receives the Mars and Cancer bracelet might decide to do all kinds of mother Mars and Cancer things like having more energy to fight for people who need it or um, learning how to take risks in nurturing myself and others. There are all kinds of possible combinations that you can have. So I think, does anybody have any questions about what I chose here or how I put this together? Okay, because it is now demo time. Oh yeah, Valerie, it does come in necklace size. This is the first for me. I've never demoed jewelry making on the internet before. I've only done jewelry parties. So here's the memory wire. This is what it looks like. If you guys can see. And whoa, this is my bracelet. You can see I strung it. Um, sometimes it takes, in my experience, a couple tries to get the layout right because you like lay out a certain number and then it turns out it's too long or too short or whatever it is. And you have to like take them all off again and then put some new ones back on. So all I'm doing here is just stringing. These are from a thrift store. I'm stringing, you can see the beads at the very bottom. It's super easy. This is a great craft for kids because anybody can just literally take this bead and string them on. I've made many, many bracelets like this with kids before. And so once you've gotten the string, you can see here's the bracelet. Sorry, I'm trying to see myself and, and this at the same time. You can see this is the, the one end and this is the other end here. There we go. And then all you do is take your needle nose pliers And, the, and, and the, what we're gonna do is fold over the edge. And what I've found is that it, it's easier to fold over the edge if I fold it against the curve. So the curve is coming down this way and I'm just gonna fold it back in the other direction. It's, it's neater in some ways if you fold it in, but I'm not strong enough to do that. And so I find it easier to fold it back the other way. Um, there is also a way to do this where you have glue and you glue on a cap, but I hate anything that comes in plastic, so I avoid glue if possible. So I'm just gonna fold this over like that and make a little loop. See, I made just a little loop right there. And that way my beads will not fall off. And then you can see I've got a little bit of extra here. So then what I would do is I would go back on this other side and trim up. I've got some extra here. Then I would go back on this other side and I would just trim this down and make another loop so it snugs right up against the bottom. So what I said is that I find that they're both the same strength as far as like the durability of your bracelet. I just find it easier to fold it back against the curve. So if it's curving this way, I fold it against the curve. But honestly, if you have a super strong wrist and you can fold with the curve and you like how it looks, you're welcome to do it that way also. And then some people, um, some people actually will come along and hang a little charm. If you like dangly bracelets, sorry, you can hang a charm from this bottom loop and create a dangly bracelet for yourself. And the advantage of that is that it helps the top of the bracelet sit at the top of your wrist in a, a comfortable sort of way because it gives a little extra weight on the bottom. Another thing about this memory wire bracelets is that they are great for elderly people who can't fiddle with tiny bracelet clasps. So you can see literally it just, it just goes right on your wrist like that. So if you have kids who want bracelets or you have older people or people with you know issues where they can't be uh, they can't be getting the tiny clasps memory wire is really great 
Okay. Anybody have any questions about how we did this? Nope, we're good. And you can see I've got the standard thing where I've got a nice mix of textures and mix of colors, and it's super happy. So the bracelet, you can see this is this diameter of this bracelet here is this is the small size memory wire, and then here's the big size. So the memory wire itself is adjustable in a larger way. So like, for example, this bracelet could go around a much bigger wrist. You can see it's quite flexible, but it, it only will like this is the smallest that it, it can become. <laughs> the diameter, there's a bottom diameter and that's just where it is. So if, if, if so when I put this on, because I have small wrists, you can see I've got some um, some excess here, but it's, it stays in place. It's not like a bangle, which goes way up and down. Um, but if you put it on a much bigger wrist, then it, it would sit kind of like this. And some people might find that kind of pinching and uncomfortable. So when I have a client who wants a bracelet, I always ask for them to measure the diameter of their wrist. If I have teenagers and kids, I always use the small size. And then for adults, sometimes people like the small and sometimes people like the big. Great. Okay. Any, any bracelet questions or should I move on to the pendant? Pendant, we're good. Okay. Is that the regular size of the wire or do you have to buy it like a reel of wire and then cut the pieces? Um, so what happens, so the, the, the diameter of the wire is set but it comes like a slinky with like a 50, 50 loops. And then you have to cut them individually to whatever size you want. And so like I could make bracelets with multiple, you know, circles on them if I wanted to. Also, by the way, I find that these make great um, uh, napkin holders. <laughs> so if you want to make somebody a set of beaded napkin holders or astrological napkin holders, these are awesome for that too. So yeah, but it comes in, in multiple loops and then you just cut off as many loops as you, as you want to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, any other questions? All right, let's get back to pendant land. The land of pendants. Okay, so some people don't like bracelets. Ooh, yes, wine markers, edges of regular glasses. I've made sets of those for people before too. Okay, so. All right, now not everybody likes bracelets and also bracelets do require more stones in general. So let's talk about how to make a pendant. So for a pendant, you need what's called a head pin or an eye pin. That's this thing in the middle here. And it's basically just a piece of wire. It's a head pin if it's got a little um, head at the end, which prevents the beads from going off. But you may also, if you're using a charm, want to get what's called an eye pin, which is just like this, except the bottom is a loop for attaching a charm as well. And then you need a pair of wire cutters, not industrial strength ones, jewelry wire cutters are fine. And generally speaking, I find that it's neater if you have round nose pliers, but you can use needle nose pliers for this as well, depending on how picky you are. This is a round nose pliers right here, which create round loops and needle nose pliers um, have a flat side and a rounded side, so they create asymmetrical loops, but they work just fine if all you want to do is get your jewelry together. So for the layout here, this is a Taurus, uh, a Taurus pendant, and I actually don't have any planets in Taurus, and I wanted to demo this because you can just make jewelry for a sign. You don't need to have any planets in the sign. I have Taurus in my third house, and so I need Taurus energy for processing, you know, messages from spirit and figuring out what to do with whatever it is that I get from my dreams or in my intuition. Taurus is uh, green. And then also, because I have it in the third house and I'm trying to highlight my communication energies, I chose a speckled green stone because speckled stones are associated with mercury. And I wanted to highlight just a little bit of mercury energies. It's kind of a, a higher level. And then the third house is also associated with um, religious ritual. And this is a silver cross of Malta, which my husband actually bought me on the island of Malta. And I've had it in my jewelry stash for like five years and never really known what to do with it, but it's got a green stone. And so I, I decided I would work on it. 
So here I am laying out my idea with the, the large and the small and some natural stones and some glass and some matte, some iridescent. And then this is where I finally put these. I might not have actually room for all of this because I couldn't find my eye pins. We just moved. And so some of my jewelry supplies are AWOL. And so I'm going to have to make a loop at the bottom of this. But it turned out that the original layout had just too many beads on it. And so I had to, I had to decrease the number of beads. So this is my pendant here for processing spirits messages because I have Taurus in the third house. So you wouldn't make a Taurus pendant for everybody to process spirits messages because Taurus isn't really normally about processing messages. But this is an example of how, because I know my chart, I can make something that's really specific for my energy because it turns out that Taurus activities, baking and cooking and you know going for walks in nature are actually really important for me as far as understanding spiritual communication. All right, does anybody have any questions? Because otherwise I'm about to show you how to make the loops. Okay. So just to clarify, um, you're, not, you're not putting the charm on because you didn't have the eye pins, correct? Nope, I'm going to put the charm on because I'm going cool. to show you guys how to convert a head pin into an eye pin. <laughs> cool, love it. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna let that stop me. No, I just, I just, I just, I don't know where it went. I'm like, how the heck did I lose some of my jewelry? You can see I've got my, I, I queued up all this stuff for you guys for the class. So I'd have all my stuff ready. Okay. So, so anyway, so this is, this is just the practice layout that I made here. I love this because these colors are so pretty. So in order to convert a head pin into an eye pin, the problem I have with this is, of course, it's going to make it shorter, which is kind of a bummer, but that's okay because jewelry is about having fun and not about being perfect. Okay, so this is the, let's see if you guys can see it. Can you highlight me again, Valerie? See myself. <laughs> I'm trying to see what I can. There we go. Okay, so can you guys see that's the head at the edge? I'm, tr I'm trying to get it against this like plain part of my background here. So this is the head at the edge, and that's that's not what I want because I want that to be a little loop so I can add my charm. So what I'm gonna do is just take my cutters here and just cut right underneath the head and snip it right off. Okay, so it's now the headless eye pin, soon to be eye pin, right? You thought the legend of Sleepy Hollow was gone, but no, it's the headless eye pin, okay. So what I do now is I'm using the width of my needle nose pliers here to measure. And I'm just putting this right at the edge. You can see, see there's the pin sticking up and I'm gonna pull it down until it's just a little bit higher than that. And then I'm gonna drop it because it's jewelry and it doesn't count if you didn't drop it. Okay. And then I'm going to just put that over and can you see I've got a little 90 degree bend so I just put it down it was straight flip it over these are cheap if you don't have experience with this expect to mess up a few you'll just it'll take you a little bit to get the hang of the manual dexterity of doing this and by the way there are many like YouTube tutorials that go into much more detail so if you wanted to google like um, how to make a loop at the end of a head pin on YouTube there's tons of people that will show you this okay so then what I do is I turn my, my pliers upside down and I put them at the edge. And then I'm gonna twist my wrist. Sorry. I'm gonna twist my wrist and I'm just gonna roll it into a loop. There we go. So I just had it flat and I just rolled it over into a loop at the top. That is the trick that it will take you a little while to get the hang of. But you will because you learn to walk and drive probably. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is just open it by moving it towards me a bit. So you can see I've opened it. Don't open it by pulling it sideways, open it by pulling it towards you, that's important. And I'm gonna add my charm to the bottom. And now I'm going to close it. 
because of course I can't leave it open or else the charm's gonna fall right off. So this is the part where I need a camera above me. So you can see we've got it here. And what I'm gonna do is just take this portion and pull it back so it's flush. Like that. See how I closed the loop there? And again, there are many tutorials for that. And now I get to add my beads back on. So I'm just gonna restring the beads and I realized that I've forgotten what order I had them on. <laughs> I've got to pull this back up now. This is a, something that is great for cell phones, by the way, is to take a picture. There we go. Okay, is to take a picture of the order that you put things on before you take it off again. So that if you forget, you can, uh, you can remember and go back. Okay. In this. Oh my gosh, I think I actually might have enough space in for this. No, I don't. Okay, so disaster has struck, but of course it's only mini disaster because in jewelry making there are no major disasters, which is partly why I like it because it is low stakes. So you can see I put this back on and oh no, I don't have any space left on my head pin. For some reason, I seem to have bought a bunch of short head pins. So I'm going to change my layout a bit here. This, by the way, is always good to do. There we are. There we go. OK. So now, because I changed my layout and I removed, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm thinking back to the pre-COVID days when I was doing this at somebody's house. <laughs> that is the best way to make jewelry. If I don't do that at least 15 times, I'm not making jewelry. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So now I've got my new layout there with my charm. I lost a bead, but it's better to lose a bead and actually have space for your head pin. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this top over flat and make another right angle and then just roll it into another loop. So I'll do that here. And just turn it over and then And you can see I've got it over and I'm just going to twist my wrist and make another loop. Perfect. And there we go. There we go. We got, yay, I know, right? There's my charm. So then I'm just going to string this on one of you know, a random necklace, but you could put it on a ribbon or a cord or whatever it is that you wanted to do. Yay. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you, Taurus in the third house. Thank you, husband, for buying me this in Malta five years ago. <laughs> thank you, me, for saying thank you instead of asking why he's spending money on this stuff, because I'm like, what am I going to do with this? But here we are five years later, and now it's useful. Okay. Any questions about the pendant and how it worked? Nope. Good. All right, I got one more demo to do and then we will be done. So I wanted something for people who don't have any tools and don't want to buy any jewelry tools, or maybe for people who don't find that manual dexterity with tiny things is really their jam. And so this was something I did and I wanted to demo this because this is something I did for uh, my husband actually, because it's not just women who can use astrology jewelry. So. This is another Taurus. And for some reason, I wanted to do Taurus and Venus. Maybe there's somebody out there who needs Taurus and Venus, or maybe I'll meet somebody who needs that. So this is a necklace. And what we're doing is we're using the colors of embroidery floss. You can use yarn. If you use yarn, by the way, you might want to involve um, a piece of dental floss, which is very strong. Not all yarn is strong, and it's always important for jewelry to be strong. Or colored string, if you want. So these are Taurus colors. 
of green and um, yellow. This yellow is actually really more pastel in real life and Venus is associated with pastels. So what you do is you tie a knot at the top and then if your, if your charm that you're using, you can see this charm is very Venusy with the pink coral roses. It's very feminine looking. You, th you might wanna thread the charm onto the um, embroidery floss before you tie the knot if the bail on your charm is very small. The bail is the term for this part that goes over the cord. So then all we're doing here is braiding. We're just braiding this. You could also crochet this or um, knit it if, if you know how to knit or crochet a small, like an I-cord. But braiding is pretty easy and so I, I chose that. And then all you're gonna do is just braid it for as long as you want. Now, if you know how to make jewelry and you want to add a clasp at the back, you totally can. Or if not, you just have to make it long enough to go over the person's head. And then you just tie it off at the end and then tie a couple extra, you know, super durable knots. So the intention on this one was loving the material world. So like Venus in Taurus is already in a good spot from, a, from an astrology standpoint because Venus rules Taurus. But again, like let's say you have that in the second house, you might find that you tend to get very worried about money or shelter and you're not actually enjoying your experience in the material world. Or if you have it in the eighth house, you might find that you tend to get preoccupied by loss or grief or death. You wanna to learn to like enjoy life more. So that would be your Venus in Taurus. Does anybody have any questions about this one before I, I just show it to you? No questions, just a su suggestion. Lori said you could also do knotting like with friendship bracelets, like a yeah. macrame style thing if you know yeah. how to do that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. That's one of the fun things about making this type of jewelry is that there's lots and lots of options. Okay, so that one I've got right here. Well, that really one nice. Charm came from my mother-in-law, who is no longer with us. But it's a good example of how not everything that you do with astrology jewelry has to be made from scratch. And you can go back into your jewelry box. And maybe there's something where you're like, I, I like this, but I never, I never wear it. You know, and now you know why, because you realize it's not a good fit with your astrology energies. And so you end up taking that necklace apart and taking the charm off and then putting it on something else. So it's really flexible. Um, now my mother-in-law had champagne taste. And so this is, I think, not an expensive thing that she's got here with the, the pearls and the stones and all that sort of stuff. So you would wanna make sure if you're making a cord like this, that it really is good and strong. And I wouldn't recommend wearing these cords in the shower. In general, I don't wear my astrology jewelry in the shower because I don't want it to get residue of soap. But this type of thing, like you wouldn't want to, you know, wear this all the time because you would want to just be careful and make sure that you're treasuring your object. So I had a shoulder injury this week. And as a result, I did not manage to braid this for as long as I would. But you can see that all I've got here is just a knot. And then once I got it to the right length, I would just make another knot at the back end once I got it big enough to go around on my head, which it's not at the moment, but it will be at some point. And then I would, oops, tie this up. And I'll mention, by the way, my mother-in-law also left me a huge collection of embroidery thread, which I use for embroidery and other things. But you can also buy individual embroidery colors at your local embroidery store if you wanna do that. And so all I would do here is just make another knot and loop this through. And if you want, you can look on YouTube for like a super, super tight knots. But my experience is that if you just make a regular knot like this, and then you just knot the whole thing off with multiple, like a square knot, that's strong enough. And so that's what I would recommend. And I would just knot this off here, make a surgeon's knot, which is three square knots. No, it's not three, it's a double wrapped square knot where you pull it through twice. That's what surgeons used to use. Maybe they still use it, but they did back in the old day when they were sewing people up with thread. And then you've got something that's nice and tight. And then I would just trim this off with a little bit of um, extra length, just in case it slips a bit, you don't want to trim it too tight. And if you want to double tighten this knot and make it really secure, you can dab it with like nail polish or varnish, and that will keep the ends from fraying. So that's kind of a way of neatening things up at the back end. All right. There are about a million more things that we could say about astrology jewelry. And we could take a walk down memory lane of all the jewelry I've made. This is um, my mother, my sister's mother-in-law 
gave me these fittings, which you can see have multiple rings on them. And so that's another fun thing to do at the jewelry store. And then I just had to make the little dangles out of old necklaces. So there's all kinds of stuff you could do. But I hope that's given you guys a basic idea of how astrology works, astrology jewelry. I've got two more things to share and then I will stop for any questions that you have. Okay, back to the slideshow. The colorful land of the slideshow. Okay, so that's these. And by the way, these are all in the ebook, it has all these slides. So you can go back and recall this. Um, I mentioned that you might want to supercharge your jewelry with a ritual. So this is my husband, hi honey. Um, and we did a Saturn charm for him for releasing anger. This was Saturn in Aries because he wanted to just be less angry. So you can see there's the necklace there. And this is one where I crocheted with embroidery red. And then I, I, as a charm, I used an old Chinese coin that my mother brought back from a trip to China and then a macrame bead. So this is a little bit more of a masculine style. And then what we did, and I'm eternally grateful to my husband for participating in my rituals, is we set up some tarot cards. Oh, and I added the uh, fearless warrior charms to the back of this. We set up some tarot cards and we had the world card for Saturn, which is the universe in this particular deck. And you can see I have a couple of uh, glyphs here for Saturn and Aries. I've got another Saturn obsidian snowflake stone. And then this particular card is the two of wands, which is where it represents where, Airy, where Saturn is in Steve's chart. Every um, decan in the, in the zodiac is associated with um, a tarot card. And so this is Steve's particular Saturn in Aries. And then we just did a ritual together um, to release anger. And honestly, it's made an amazing difference. I was kind of stunned by how efficacious this was. And before he would just get mad. And now he says things like, I think I'm really angry because and we've been married for 24 years and it's a great relief when your husband stops just getting mad and starts saying, I think I'm anxious about blank. I think I feel angry because this isn't happening. Like the fact that he's actually talking about what he's angry about instead of just being mad is like a huge plus. Um, and he wears this all the time. This is this photo was taken at a rest stop while we were driving back from California like last year. So yeah, it's a thing. So if you want to figure out your intention and what you're creating and then create some ritual for yourself um, that symbolizes that for you, you can boost the energy of your special piece up even more. And then at the end, I said I'd mention how to get the ebook and here it is. So if you go to my website, which is spiritsaid.com, this is the actual page, astrology jewelry ebook, or at the top, there's just a, a um, banner. And if you click on it, it says click for the jewelry ebook. You can see it's got um, uh, tables down here with the signs and the different colors and the different stones and different symbols. And then it's got the slides with the step-by-step -step instructions. Now, I didn't get to write as much of the step-by-step -step instructions because of the shoulder injury. So I do plan to go back and, and, um, and, uh, uh, and uh, like flesh this out a little bit more so that's a little bit more standalone. But if you guys pick up your copy of this, then I'll send you the more advanced copy once I finally get it together. And then you're also obviously welcome just to email me, Robin at Pool MX, and I'll be happy to send you a copy of the ebook if you would like. And that's the end. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'm at Spirit Said Style. Those are my Instagram and Facebook handles, well, or you can hear from my website. We really, 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 really enjoyed this. It was uh, wonderful and uh, extremely uh, well tailored. I thought, you know, you you really gave some very insightful um, news to us. <laughs> and uh, so, thank you so much for your good preparation. And uh, we really very much enjoyed it. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. And this will be on Valerie's YouTube channel. So. If you're watching this and thinking, wow, I have a friend who could really use this, or you know a fellow jewelry lover who might be interested in upping their game with their jewelry, or you're just like, well, I'd like to watch this again, then Valerie's going to put it up there and you'll be able to check out the replay. My hope is to write a book on this, actually. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, because I want to I condense all of this into a book and put it out there for public consumption. 
but I'm glad you guys liked it. Jewelry is really near and dear to my heart, as you can tell. So I have a question, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Do you create jewelry for people who might not want to create their own and I offer do. it for sale? I do. Yes, I do. So, I thought you did. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so you guys can also contact Robin if you would like her to create a custom piece for you and her contact information is in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yep, I do. And in fact, I recently made a piece for um, a mother, um, excuse me, commissioned me to make a piece for her daughter because they were having communication challenges. And so she wanted her daughter to get some, she wanted some support for her daughter to be able to speak her truth and not feel like she had to just hide what she really thought or believed about things. So yeah, so I do pieces for individuals. And then also if you have a loved one or you know somebody who might be interested in a, a piece, I love creating stuff for people. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you once again, Robin, for gracing us with your astrology vast wisdom and knowledge and also how we can pull that into a practical way and make jewelry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you everyone who's watching. Check out the links in the comment for ways to get in touch with Robin and past videos.